Hi, Kathy. Hi, Matt. How are you? Good. So how's everything going on your end? I'm okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. I um, was washing my windows early this morning. I live mm -hmm. in a condo and about once a year, I try to wash the windows. So um, I, uh, I don't do a very good job of it, but <laughs> I... Uh, got the ladder and the hose and my cleaner. And early this morning, I went out and sprayed the windows and used the hose and looked at my job. And yeah, it's never perfect. Cause I basically, the windows are high up. So like I can spray, but like, it's really hard for me to actually get up there and scrub with something. Mm -hmm. so it's never a great job. It's kind of like, okay, it's somewhat better, but it's not like great. Yeah. Know? So I did my thing and that was it. I called it a day. And then I came back inside and I looked and I was like, hmm, yeah, not great, but what can you do? Right. I don't, I, it's, we, we got to move on here. Right. <laughs> I totally understand. Yeah. So that was my exciting morning so far, cleaning windows. <laughs> Mine has just been meetings nonstop. Mm -hmm. Hi, Josh. Hello. How are you all today? Good. Good. How are you? Tuesday feels like Monday. That is all. Mm -hmm. Can be a long week. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you, Vicki. You're welcome, Josh. All right, it's five after. Um, I'm waiting for Kate Stewart and Brian Bellendorf to show up, but we can probably get moving with the first agenda item. I don't know who added this one. There's no name on it. I assume it's one of the Red Hat folks. Yes, that's us. Um, yeah, so Matt, um, is going to talk about our component registry going open source. Hi there. Um, I'm Matt Miller, and uh, I just wanted to uh, let you know um, I manage the component registry effort within um, within product security within Red Hat, 
and I work with Kathy. I know Kathy is your, your rep here on the working group. We just wanted to let you all know that the component registry is now um, open sourced. So uh, what that means is, uh, you know, we've initially uh, made it available for, um, you know, the community to look at uh, with a couple of caveats. We, we kicked off the component registry project uh, within um, a Red Hat in January. And although we had been doing manifesting of our products and services up until that point, we realized that we needed a better solution for our manifesting given uh, U.S. executive order on cybersecurity requirements and all other the other things that have been going um, on with regard to SBOMs and that kind of thing. So we've been um, working on our component registry uh, effort uh, as a better way to do manifesting. We just open sourced this project um, a couple of days ago. So you'll see here in the meeting notes, the link to GitHub uh, for our project. Uh, a couple of caveats, which I wrote here in the agenda is, we still need to do quite a bit of work um, for uh, this project. Uh, it, it <clears throat> We are testing right now some of our manifest data to see how it uh, will look under the component registry compared to our manifesting up until this point. Um, and uh, the other thing is what we've noticed with different companies, or organizations that have come out with, um, you know, their manifesting solutions to try to ge generate S bombs that um, there's really no magical S bomb generator. Um, for example, for us, it's still an internally focused application for a manifest. It's, it, I think at this point, it can be used as a recipe for how you want to uh, potentially build your own registry or your own manifesting solution, your own company. But really, it's <clears throat> fundamentally a shell that uh, is such that you have to really put in your own data, your manifest data from your own products and services to make it work and generate the SBOM. Um, we've noticed that with other companies, like I think Microsoft came out with an SBOM tool uh, not too long ago and made that open source, uh, I think also a GitHub for people to look at. And so, so, so you know, so, so, ahead, sorry. This is Pratik Mishra, sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but just just so I, I sort of understand the logical flow. So, so there, there's sort of a process of extracting S bonds right from re repositories or artifacts or whatever. So that's one piece of it, right? And then, and this sounds like a, a second piece, kind of a place where where they can be published and managed. Is that am I on the right track? Or so, the, so this would be both. Ah, so, I yeah. So what we have here is. Um, a, a method by which manifests can be extracted. Right. And for Red Hat, it's a rather complicated endeavor given the number of products and services that we have. And uh, we use collectors to grab that data. So that's the first thing that would come under this component registry project. The second thing would be the component, and it's not in there yet, and that's the work that still needs to be done, is that the, our components, component registry will be used to generate SBOMs and it will become our default manifesting tool for Red Hat uh, across the whole company. Once we are farther along and we know that we tested it, we know it works and that it can be used to replace our existing way of manifesting. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, no, thank, thank you, Matt. That's, that's yeah. very clear. Yeah, good, good to know, man, yeah. So, you know, I guess the last thing I would say is, um, you know, we will let you know as we are further along with development, I'll either come on this call or I'll, I'll give Kathy some updates and she'll come on and, you know, tell you all what's, what's new. This, this is going to be a long-term endeavor for Red Hat. Um, and so even, even when we think, we're going to have we're going to be able to GA our component registry internally 
um, we're still going to be obviously testing the quality of the manifesting. And at some point, we will make more of the component registry available for the community, given the interest in this. So again, we're I just want to emphasize, we're pretty much at the early stages, but you can go in. Um, you can take a look if you have any relevant inputs, you know, feel free to give us some inputs. Um, but that's really kind of where we are with uh, the component registry. So I don't know if folks have any other questions or I see some hands ready. up, I guess. Perhaps. Yes, you do. Or at least you see my hand up. Okay. Um, well, hi, Matthew. Um, so uh, will we be able to get a demo of this when you feel it's ready to do that? It sounds like it's still very, very much in the early stages. Um, uh, so that's question one, and you can roll in an answer to that. Is this related to uh, all of the um, SBOM, SPDX work that uh, Jelaine and Fontana have been doing? Um, they've been, there's been a few discussions around it in uh, the SPDX legal list lately. And so I was just wondering whether mm -hmm. I can tie those together in my mind in some way. But mostly everyone else is, I'm sure, concerned about the demo because it would be lovely to be able to see this. Yeah, so uh, point noted on the demo. Uh, to be realistic, we're probably not gonna be ready for a demo to give you all until sometime in the fall-ish timeframe or you know, depending upon how things go, it could be even sort of like the winter time frame. Um, but we can come back and certainly do that. Uh, it may be also too that we can uh, perhaps earlier uh, record a demo because we we we've started experimenting with that. We can record some kind of preliminary demo and then even just make it available maybe out here for you all to look at. But we can, you know, also come back as well. Um, that's the first question. That's the first question I want to answer. The second one. Um, so initially, our plans are that we are looking at the SPDX format as well as the Cyclone DX format, both for uh, manifesting. Um, in fact, with our legacy tool that we use now, which is called Deptopia, which is our interim solution that we cooked up last year as a volunteer effort before we started the component registry um, project officially in January. We can generate now uh, SPDX formats for manifesting, but it's, but when, but I caveat that by saying uh, the manifesting that we can generate now does not include license information. It does not include various layer product relationships and things that we have at Red Hat, like, uh, you know, um, how sort of our, you know, uh, enterprise, you know, the, the relationships uh, between, uh, you know, sort of like components that are used by, let's say, enterprise Linux, as well as like, let's say, OpenShift or something. Um, and, and right now it's a very manual process to, to tie security vulnerabilities to these components. So, you know, we are working on improving our manifesting, um, based upon, uh, what we were able to do in the interim, but yes, to answer your question in a long-winded way, we are looking at the legal side of things, uh, as PDX format, Cyclone DX, we'll probably try to produce both initially. Um, our legal team is also very involved with at Red Hat with what we're producing because we want to make these uh, manifest reports available to customers. Um, and we have, based upon our legacy tooling, a couple of customers have already asked for some preliminary reports. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a work in progress, but, but yes, we are trying to tie in what the community is doing in terms of um, the different formats. And basically what we're doing now is, <clears throat> so you have a little bit more idea. Hey, Matthew, I yeah. want to time box this discussion. Of Can course. you wrap it up in the next minute or two? Yeah, I'll wrap it up, sure. So what we're doing now is really just testing the manifesting for our top products. So RHEL, 
uh, and a few others to see how the manifesting looks right now in the Kimono registry, right? We're testing the data. So that's where we are. That's it. Uh, if there are any other questions, happy to answer them or just, you know, chat more offline with folks. So awesome. Thank you. Maybe okay. I'll, All right. It's a critique. I'll, so maybe I'll take it offline, Matthew. I yeah. Think. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's move cool. on. Yep. Good. Uh, okay. The next topic is work streams affecting this group. I asked Brian to come here to tell us all about that. So, Brian, take it away. <clears throat> Hi. Um, Sorry, uh, Josh, I was expecting a little bit more context, but I'm uh, uh, happy to talk about kind of just what we talked about the other day. Uh, so um, as you all know, we've got this mobilization plan. It called for S-bombs everywhere as stream number nine. Uh, and uh, we are very eager to see that work progress. Uh, what we've been working to figure out is what's the, what's the next step for ev evolving the plan and taking the um, the the five pager I think it was that uh, a a subset of the folks in this room and, and a few others worked on for that plan and turn that into a series of fundable work right um, and so I've got a proposal in front of the TAC that I'm still waiting for their kind of thumbs up on uh, and then um, something to set up with the governing board as a as a consequence of that which basically calls for the creation of a SIG under different working groups um, uh, 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 one per stream. So setting up a SIG for uh, the, the SMOM Everywhere effort under this working group would be the logical and kind of next step to continue that forward. The point of that SIG would be to um, st steward that, that, that plan forward, you know, to update it, to uh, basically take ownership of it and, and uh, set new targets if new targets make sense, but also to do the groundwork of figuring out what's the next logical chunk of work to do um, uh, that involves paying somebody to do a thing, uh, uh, benefiting from and building on top of whatever other volunteer efforts uh, uh, emerge in the community. Um, we presume that there's volunteer efforts. We, we know that there's lots of people releasing SBOM generation tools and the like. So the plan should should build on top of all that and, and figure out how to how to move the ball forward on the goals, specifically in the in the in that in that overall plan. Um, the idea is that those proposals would be submitted uh, to uh, actually one of two different places. Um, the first would be, you know, we've got a bunch of pledges from companies against the plan. Um, we haven't yet figured out the pipeline of turning that money into into work, but but the idea is that proposals would go in front of the organization that made those pledges, and and then hopefully we'd raise funds. Um, from them, you know, 100K from here, 100K from there, pretty soon would add up to a 300K kind of chunk of work. Um, uh, so, so this the SIG that would be under a work group like Security Tools, which I think makes sense to, to house uh, the SBOM Everywhere SIG. Um, we create these proposals, put them in front of those folks. We as staff would help facilitate that, but, but this is not Brian as a domain expert or, or any of the open, other open SSF staff uh, kind of you know projecting a certain view of how things should work other than to say you know, the collective intelligence uh, pulled together under the SIG and this working group should really shepherd that forward. Um, the other place it could go would be in front of the TAC. I'm working with the TAC now to get some of the budget that the TAC has available to it to, to spend on technical work. Um, which isn't a huge amount of money compared to what I think is needed to move the SBOM everywhere project forward, uh, uh, <clears throat> but is enough to get started on some things, um, setting up the processes for them to be able to evaluate these proposals as well. So I, um, that's, that's kind of the, the update on why, um, you know, there hasn't yet been, been any funding from OpenSSF for SBOM related work. We'd like to get started on that though. Um, and so uh, I'm not here to make a formal proposal for the SIG, but uh, but instead looking for folks in this um, working group who feel this is a good idea and may want to volunteer to uh, step up to create that that SIG under this working group and get started on that work. Before, Josh, is that what you were looking for? Uh, yes. Before okay. I go to Kathy, she has a question. I apologize, Kathy. It's one of the benefits of being in charge. Uh, so Brian, you you said about creating a SIG in this group, but we can't technically do that until the TAC approves your plan, right? Or am I mistaken in that? Well, um, there have been a couple of SIGs informally that have begun um, focusing on this. So Crobe, for example, has been hosting calls, including one this morning uh, for the emergency response team uh, component. Uh, uh, the, the, the working group, I forget the working group that created it, but, but uh, um, 
uh, is the vulnerability disclosures working group. Um, uh, let's move forward on that. There's been another one that's been meeting on moving uh, stream one, the education stuff uh, forward a bit. So I think I think whether we create that funding structure under the governing board, board is anticipated uh, or not. Um, it's, you know, working groups are free to create special interest groups uh, underneath them uh, uh, and 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 move forward uh, with that. And and if we find, have to go look for funding other places, we can we can do that. But um, but that my proposal to the TAC was just to try to like systematize this and get their kind of consent with that idea not to create a, a roadblock. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, Kathy. Thank you. Yeah, I was just wondering, is that a request just to create a SBOM group or is that also going to transition to we have a SAS special interest group and also a FCA special interest group for all the different or DAST or a fuzzing group or is it just for the one? Uh, uh, these other working groups at, at OpenSSF, sorry. Um, um, no, in this in this subset, in this tooling working group, right? So um, secure tooling, there's a lot of different yeah. tools. There's SAS, SCA, you know, SBOM tools. Oh. So this proposal is just for creating just the one group for... Uh, uh, if 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 the the working group chose to create a, a SIG, the, 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 as I described here, it'd be focused on the stream in the mobilization plan, um, stream nine, S bomb everywhere, uh, as as currently framed. Although it would own evolving that frame uh, as as new th software emerges, as discussions about interoperability uh, emerge, you know the kind of work that it proposals proposes, even the targets uh, and and timeframes and the like might might ad adjust. And it's really up to the SIG to to uh, to to own that overarching picture, but then also figure out what are the next concrete steps to take to get funded. But yes, it would be specific to SPOMs um, rather than okay. other types of tooling. I think yeah. that was your question. Which, and and yeah. I'll just add one more thing to Brian's answer is Kate Stewart is here, who is, I would say, the unwilling leader of SPOM everywhere, maybe. But Kate's been doing a great job of kind of wrangling all the, all the, the bits and pieces of, of this. And so I asked her to come to this meeting. So uh, Vicki. Yeah. Uh Hi, uh, big member of the Kate Stewart fan club. Yay, card carrying. Um, uh, I was wondering whether um, the uh, placement of this SIG underneath the tooling working group implies that it is, the SIG is primarily around tooling, right? Um, which I, I don't, I am not necessarily questioning whether that is the case, but I'm wondering, is that the case? Uh, or does this make more sense under, for instance, the um, supply chain integrity uh, working group? Uh, I just want to make sure that the SIG and the SPOM Everywhere initiative ends up in the right place where the most people who are most interested in it will see it. And there's no saying that obviously there's not going to be, there's going to be tooling involved, right? Obviously. So there will be a uh, cross-pollination between working groups as there should be because we're all in this together but I just want to make sure that ends up in the right place and so I am not sure yet whether this is the right place and I would love someone to convince me either for or against that I'll, I'll take a, a, a stab although I do want to note I'm your humble uh, facilitator. Um, uh, it's really up to the community and and where folks who want to do the hard work uh, want to live within uh, to make to make that call. Um, my um, my suggestion is that it's here. My, that was part of my initial proposal um, to the TAC, uh, where I kind of sprinkled these SIGs across the different working groups. Um, partly because the the goal for SBOM everywhere is to get SBOM generation and consumption to be uh, built into the tooling of uh, modern development infrastructure so much that it was easy to ask open source projects to start to do that, to start to check the SBOMs of upstream components if that to whatever degree that makes sense. Um, and, and that it was it was built into the tools so that the lift was very minor. Um, uh, and so that we got SBOMs up, as far upstream in the supply chain as we could rather than SBOM generation being something left to the last mile where if it happens, it'll be proprietorized or be seen as a competitive differentiation, that kind of thing. Um, so that's where I um, kind of, the, that was kind of the goal of the stream, which is what led me to think 
Um, uh, and that was kind of an arbitrary decision on my part um, uh, to suggest it here. Uh, I kind of leave it all up to you as the security tools working group to decide if that was if it was the right home. Um, I, I, and you could you could decide to take it on or, or not. Um, but I, I, I and my hope is that there is a home in the open SSF somewhere for it. If not, then we'll probably remove it from the plan, you know, on the on the basis of, I guess, SBOM tooling doesn't have a home at OpenSSF. My, my belief is this is probably the most likely one, but but anyways, go ahead. If others want to throw in on this, Pratik looks like he has his hand up. Yeah, hi, hi Brian. Yeah, quick, quick question in terms of scope, right? So one of the challenges is sort of adequacy of SBOM generation, right? There's so many artifacts, there's repositories, there's images, there are libraries, there's, right? So would, would some guidance, I'm, I'm not saying, right, that we magically sort of uh, imagine this tool that quote does it all, but would some, would, this would would it be in scope to provide some guidance how to go about doing this and perhaps even push some requirements to the different communities python java whatever right I, I, i'm not solutioning i'm just saying would those requirements be in scope adequacy efficacy of s bomb generation and how to achieve it um, one of the things that josh and i were chatting about the other day was on ramps and making it clear and how to make it easy for people to put this into their tooling. I think that is in scope. Um, that we can, you know, say, if you're going to start generating a minimum, this is what it needs to have. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, how do you, you know, uh, we don't have a green field. There's a lot of, there's a lot of messiness out there and a lot of, you know, evolution we're going to have to pick up. And so Sarah's saying, here's how to go st get started, then here's how to continue to refine and enrich. Seems like a reasonable to approach to me anyhow, but feel free to contradict me. But yeah, the challenge is getting it into the tooling and making it easy for the tools to do it. So it's behind the scenes. It's not front and center as an extra huge lift for the developers in any way, shape or form. Right, right. Not, not to rat hold too much on this, right? But having people having to pull together, you know, a bit of this tool and that tool and the third tool and no, this doesn't work against, you know, uh, PyPy and this, this only works on, on jars, but not, 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 not you know, it's it just any, any guidance or any helpful scoping there, I, I think would be a contribution to the community. Yeah. Seems like a reasonable thing for the SIG to do to me. Kathy, Kathy. Yeah, um, I, I've attended quite a few um, supply chain integrity group meetings. Um, it seems to be more of a framework tool agnostic. Um, so, and coming up with recommendations for the supply chain and how to secure it and, and, and addressing it that way. The tools that they do have, that they are creating are usually automations to validate that things are actually being accomplished. So the fact that this group actually works on the tooling and making the tools better and has people interested in coding those tools or improving those open source tools, I could see why it would be the proper team for, for the SIG to go towards. This is my two cents. Did that catch your point, Vicki? Or does this other things you're looking for? Um, uh, I'm just, you know, uh, the assumption is that I have anything specific I'm looking for, right? Aside from just verifying with the community that this is something that they think makes sense for them. Um, I was coming to these calls for a while and then I dropped off uh, due to time. But if uh, SBOM everywhere is going to land here, then I will be here all the time. I just want to make sure that um, since I did drop off, I know that uh, Josh and the others have been working on other things in the meantime. And I want to is, is this on the happy path for tooling or would it make a better make better sense to go elsewhere All right um so i'm looking for someone else to make the decision i'm just being the gadfly sorry where else would you send it vicky just the the integrity group you think yeah, I mean, I guess if it fits anywhere that it would probably be there. Um, or, uh, you know, SPDX has been doing a great deal of work on this. I am you know, uh, just in general, SBOMs, that's kind of their bread and butter, what they do. Um, but it is a different group. It's not open as, as a set. 
So I don't know, I, I know obviously there's going to be collaboration there, which is part of why we have the fabulous Kate Stewart here. Um, but I, I really don't have any other recommendations. I just wanna make sure it does make sense. And as Brian said, the option is on the table to drop this completely if it doesn't make sense to fit anywhere with an open SSF. If no one has these cycles to pick it up, um, that's great. I personally think it would be a shame to drop that, um, in which case someone else should pick up the ball, perhaps in another uh, Linux Foundation sub-foundation or, or what, but um, I, I'm pretty keen on this being done, but I, I'm not keen enough to step up and run the SIG because I don't have the time to do that, um, unfortunately. Right. Let's, um, you know, again, I, I and I didn't come here specifically to make the proposal for the creation of the SIG yet. Um, I, I, I kind of wanted the TAC to bless the approach of using SIGs uh, to carry forward the work of the mobilization plan first, although, as, as noted, some other groups have started to meet. If there are people willing to, to, to take that ball forward here, I, I, I want to encourage them and, and, and will support them in any way. Um, but you're, it does take somebody, you know, saying this is important enough, we've got to move forward. There is a uh, Slack channel that we created for each of the different streams uh, as we were developing the plan and then kind of as a, a follow up that's been quiet uh, for a couple of weeks, uh, specific to this one um, called the, the stream dash nine dash S bomb dash everywhere uh, channel, which has 64 people in it. Um, assuming TAC, uh, the tag was good with the overall proposal of using SIGs, I was going to go to each of those Slack channels and say, all right, I, I, the next step here is to take these informal activities we've been doing here in the Slack channel and formalize them as SIGs at different working groups. Um, uh, and we suggest starting, you know, as I'm everywhere here at security tools uh, I, and seeing if it's a, a good fit. Um, I, I'm hearing uh, uncertainty about whether uh, security tools is the right fit by folks here. I don't, I'm not ready to call a vote or anything like that, but because um, again, I'm not making a formal proposal, but um, if there's a general sense that this is something that fits within the, the, the mission of the security tools working group, then that helps me because it, then it's easier for me to suggest this as a starting point to that group of 60 of, of of 64 people. All right, I want to make a kind of counter proposal to all this. This, the open SSF talks too much. And so rather than yammering on about whether we should or shouldn't do something, I think we should just do this. Kate has been gracious enough to dedicate an enormous amount of time to this effort already. And, and I know she's willing to continue that. And I think it, it, maybe it doesn't have to exist here forever, but I think we have a place to start and we have people willing to put the effort in. And so I think it would be foolish to put any more discussion into this topic unless someone is violently opposed to it, which I don't think anyone's violently opposed to it. And we can obviously reevaluate which working group or, or whatever. It, it should live under, which I think honestly is a formality for the most part. And, and I, I told Kate as well yesterday, I think we all need another meeting, like we need a hole in our head. And so I would love to see us hijack part of this meeting every other week to help just put the pieces together for SBOM everywhere. I, th I think it's a, I think we have a lot of opportunity and I think we have a lot of will to do it. And we don't have, I mean, there's no formal structure for these groups to vote or anything, but should we just assume, unless someone says no, we do this? I like the idea of having um, every other week in this time slot. Um, yeah. Going towards that, I think that's a great idea. Thank you for championing fewer meetings. <laughs> I don't, yeah. And we know this is one of the streams that um, has a, a lot of hard work to do early on because of the very divergent opinions out there about the the right technical platforms, the right places to invest in tooling and the like. And Kate, uh, you did an admirable job, uh, you and, and Gary and, and others at this uh, small group conversation we had in Austin. Josh was there as well um, uh, uh, with some of the folks from 
the Cyclone DX uh, uh, side of the house as well, um, talking about ways that we could move forward uh, further on interop and that sort of thing. And I think I'd, I'd love to see this SIG that's created. Um, uh, I mean, using this this meeting um, uh, to move move the ball forward makes some sense. But I also think having a small team uh, able to, to to work on the document, work on these interop issues, and come up with concrete kind of next steps for investment to to move the tooling forward. I think that's kind of important, um, I, and and I think that that SIG should have uh, some named participants so that they can vote on on how to move forward. And I think I think the the, the loose way to get started with this is to suggest that Kate and Josh um, work on kind of recruiting for that SIG. Maybe some of the folks who are uh, in other places in the SBOM community, including in that Slack channel and others, uh, and come up with a set of of individuals who are kind of named by this. Um, by this working group as as that SIG so that they can then um, not only draft proposals, but understand when they have consensus to advance that proposal off to potential funding sources. I, I, I like this. I would, we don't need to answer it right now, but I think one of the challenges with something like this is always everyone volunteers and nobody helps. And so I wanna make sure it's not just a Slack channel full of people who don't do anything. Like mm -hmm. I, I think, that's that's the trick with the SIG, SIG, yes, yeah, SIG. We have too many acronyms. Um, that's the challenge, right? Is how do we and, and Brian, you might have ideas on this and, and Kate, you might as well, but let's let's find a way to make sure the SIG is people doing work and not a thousand people who think it's neat to put their name on SBOM. Well, let's also use this as an opportunity to bring in some folks who aren't otherwise very committed across a very wide range of other open SSF activities uh, or others, too. I mean, um, I know, Josh, you're active in a lot of things. Uh, Kate obviously has a very full full load as well. Let's uh, I mean, if there's others here on this call who aren't as active in other um, parts of open SSF who are looking for an opportunity to really get roll up their sleeves and have a huge impact. I mean, I think this 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 SIG could could be um, a, a, you know really benefit from from your time and, and focus. Uh, I just I, I I I'm hesitant to go back to the same folks who are volunteering on on twenty different things in parallel uh, to to move this forward and myself included. Right. Yep. I I agree. And and there's people outside of the open SSF that I think we should engage. And and if there's interest, we could certainly get the word out about about the formation of this, you know, through Twitter, through um, oh, you know. Let, let, let's just reach out, okay? Right. Uh, okay. Right. Uh, basically, putting a great big Twitter storm out there will basically bring people in from the whole um, to watch as opposed to do. That's what I'm afraid of. Okay, I've been. In this area, in the S pump space, I've been seeing a lot of that, and so let's find the people who are willing to volunteer to put some time in on helping to draft this stuff and see if we can get it moving forward. Um, there's some I'm willing to you know, say. I told, I'll. There's some things I can do quickly, and I'll try to help out there. And then Trevor has already volunteered, and he seems to be trying to work on doing something. So maybe we might get some of the use cases that we asked for from the DC meeting starting to get documented in use cases as part of the SIG as well. Because that was one of the, here are the security cases we're going to care about and getting people to weigh in on the security cases will help form the requirements for a lot of the other stuff over, long, over the longer period. So hopefully we'll get a framework going there. Is there anyone else on this call today that really wants to be part of this, I guess is my ask, that will um, start, you know. Okay, Kathy, sure. great. Sure, I'm looking to be more involved and be a doer. <laughs> Thanks, Kathy. Thanks, Vicki. Appreciate yeah. it. I know your Vicky's completely overwhelmed as well, but very much appreciate your efforts and time on these two. Okay. Yeah, I'll I'll do my best to carve out at least an hour or so a week if, if possible. I mean, aside from our call, but I will do my darndest. That would be wonderful. All right. So I guess the next action is Kate, you're gonna, I guess, herd the cats and then we'll sync back up in two weeks, I guess, with a progress update. Okay, and um, I'm hoping that you're helping me herd the cats in, Josh. I'm totally gonna help, yes, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> so we'll this do this is, together. Thank I'm going you. to stop doing many other things for this because I think this is extremely important. Okay, 
Then and I do that. suggest either Josh or Kate, the next step is on that um, uh, Slack channel, just let people know things are starting to converge here uh, and you're looking for people to uh, step up to put an hour a week uh, or more into um, into the SIG uh, going forward. Uh, just cause a lot of those 64 people are likewise overcommitted, <laughs> interested parties. Let's find the the other five or 10 on that who are, could also step up to be named uh, parts of the SIG. Are you right. comfortable doing that, Josh, as chair for tooling, just to assert? Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Awesome. Then let you assert, and then I'll still, I'll I'll do the shaking of the trees as well. <laughs> awesome. Good. This is exciting. Okay. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Kate. I appreciate both of you coming. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's. What else is on this agenda? I've lost my tab. Uh, sorry, I have too many tabs open. I, I found it. Uh. All right, so I'll fill the next steps in the notes, but uh, next is prioritization of contributions from Daniel. Is Daniel here? Yep, I'm here. Ah, there you are, hello. Hi everyone. Um, in the light of all this discussion, I'm not sure about this um, question actually. Um, we are um, contributing to a number of tools. For example, the OSS uh, review toolkit uh the scorecard and other tools i wanted um and regularly i have students or other uh volunteers to contribute to um um security related tools uh linters um s bomb generators so i wanted to ask um maybe if if it is uh, within the scope of this uh, group to have a priorities a prioritization of projects and eventually the, um, some issues in this project uh, so we can invite people to contribute to in order to um, score the, um, the goal of this group. Um, I usually uh, bring up these sort of tools, for example, the um, OSS uh, review toolkit or the, the scorecard, but I wanted to ask, if uh, having a list of uh, suggested tools would be something that uh, this uh, group could recommend in a in a web page in somewhere, or maybe this is completely tools agnostic. So that's uh, that's a question because I regularly have uh, people volunteering to to contribute to um, free software projects. I'll, I'll, I'll jump in. I mean, I think it's a great idea, but I know it, this is hard to do. I've been part of lots of groups that have tried to do this in the past, and, and it's always a struggle to put kind of put out help wanted and then connect people who are, are looking to help for a variety of reasons. I, I feel like the answer to this is someone just needs to do it. And if if you know people willing to I, I guess, seek out projects looking for help and then connect them to people willing to help, that would be very valuable, I think. And, and I mean, I think this is just kind of one of those topics where like the open SSF doesn't have magic, it just needs people to do it. And, and like, I'm, I'm, I would be totally supportive of this if someone's willing to put together a list. Which is probably- I can, I can bring a, a short list um maybe in the next meeting we can discuss or offline uh, the list but um i i was looking for tools that are highly aligned with this uh, with this group and um, with this mission so um there's lists of tools for both cyclone and spdx that work with the formats for s bombs including oss review toolkit of course um, the challenge right now is how we start storing them up in a way that's um, explorable. And this is something that, um, so the question, I guess, is the scope of tools, for one thing, and then how much do we want to pull off the others and actually come up with some sort of landscape? We sort of have started a landscape, but we're lacking people to help fill it in on the SPDX side, for instance, to, um, to Josh's point. But I'm just trying to figure out um you know what 
if we want to start with the list, what's on your list and where does the scope boundaries lie of the list? And is it amenable to putting together a landscape? I mean, um, you might be right, Kate, and this might lead into the next topic, which critique has, is there an inventory of standard tools somewhere? Yeah. There, I mean, these are kind of related. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like if, there's a crying need for it. Yeah. Everyone wants it. No one's sort of agreeing on how to actually form it. Um, and, you know, we've been talking about it in the outreach team on SPDX, for instance, um, and trying to, you know, catch that. But, you yeah. know, do we have a taxonomy we're all comfortable with for classifying these things under? So, like, you know, tools have different purposes, right, and generate different outputs. So maybe... I think didn't Ava do a lot of work on taxonomy um, and they have some documents oh, do um, it yeah it's under the git bomb project uh, they have a document somewhere I believe it's since moved into the git bomb repository I think it's um, it's fairly academic and dense and not over user friendly as a document but it is dense and full of information. Um, and it's something that I was going to recommend that we in uh, SPDX outreach um, kind of use yeah. within the landscape project. Um, right. And um, the, the need for this tool is why I have enlisted help within Wipro on that landscape project. We need this list and SPDX landscape is already making a start on that. So it'd be nice to maybe leverage that in there. Mm -hmm. I'll defer to you all so, 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 Kate, would, would the effort you're planning to lead co cover these kinds of topics? Is that a, a, a I, I, understanding? Well, I, it'll, it'll certainly come to the SBOM tooling because people need to know where to go to look for things. But the, this group yeah. is more than just SBOM tooling. Yeah, yeah. It's also mm -hmm. security it tooling, is. Which, is, which is, you know, I think yeah. to Daniel's point. And so the question is, what classifications of tools do we want to be you know, tools are used for purposes at the end of the day. What purposes are we encompassing in this type of text? I mean, that's why I was wondering if I'm extending some of the landscape work that's out there might suffice. Like we've got the, you know, the NTIA tooling for S-bombs, but there's other tooling like, you know, what toolings should be used for fuzzing, what tooling should be yeah. used for, um, you know, validation. You know, how about requirements tracking? Is that things that we might want to be looking at for like, you know, the whole threat modeling and things like that? and tracking in that section. So I guess it's a question of maybe, Daniel, if you could come up with a list of the categories of tools we think we want to catch, then we can maybe explore in another meeting how- Hey, I can bring the, the- Yeah, sure. I can create an initial version of the, of the list. Um, indeed, for example, we are contributing to not only SBOM generator, like OSS um, review toolkit, but we are also contributing to Radon. We contribute to um, um, uh, uh, Docker-related uh, uh, security tools as well. Um, since I have this, um, uh, people us usually coming to me asking uh, where I can contribute to because I want to have experience, I want to have uh, some uh, exposure to the um, free software community. And it's a lot of uh, energy I want to address. Oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, especially from uh, students, very capable students, not only from um, companies that want to uh, participate. So I think I, I don't want to, to, to lose this opportunity of uh, contributors. So I, I will come up with a, um, a, a, an initial list with the categorization. Uh, we can review this uh, uh, next time. Okay. All right, uh, Altez. Uh, so I just uh, wanted to make a quick comment. Um, I think there are other communities that have already started on, on landscapes. Um, my concern is uh, if we do this on our own, we could end up isolating SBOMs, which is what we've had as a problem with security and, and just development and stuff. So CNCF has done some work on landscapes. I think digital AI has done some stuff on landscapes. Could we just not pull them in and say, please, uh, let's work together to integrate SBOMs into all these various other pipelines well, I, that are think, out there? I think it's more than just the S I guess my point was it wasn't just, I don't want it to just be SBOMs in yeah. the landscape, mm -hmm. which is what we've got. We want to have the other types of security tools in the landscape yep. for this and then pull in Thank from you. communities. 
I think we're I think we're lining up here. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm very interested in that. I'm just I, I run into this issue all the time, right? And and so let's not let's not create another island of of you know our own taxonomy or things like that. So, yes. in, in, you know, if we've got connections with some of these other groups, let's pull them in. Um, you know, we're all working towards the same goal here. I think that would be great. Thanks. So the, the CNCF guys basically helped the SPDX community set up the framework for the landscape. So it's sort of amenable. And I'd say. The one we're doing on SPDX is not necessarily the end one for you, but if we can basically take that and sort of evolve it, maybe we can make these communities feed into a master landscape for security yeah. tools. So I think this could round trip over to the folks that are doing supply chain, because now you end up with a landscape of tools that you can bring in. And now we're starting to get into ref arcs. I think that's, you know, let's move in that direction to provide yep. some yep. real, you know, concrete on ramps here. Absolutely. Okay, sounds good. And, over and out. Thanks. Yep. And, and your comment amuses me because this group has probably had no less than 10 discussions about creating a landscape list. And every time it's been a hand slap of, no, they're already there. <laughs> Let's, don't do this. But absolutely. Yeah. 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 We'll, we'll find it. Now, now we could create a list of the lists, right? That's like as meta as you can get, I think. Cool. Uh, all right. Let me, I've lost the agenda again. Um, Pratik, are you happy with how these conversations kind of melded together or? Yeah, no, I, I think it, the truth is that, right, many of my questions were answered <laughs> previous to your uh, coming to my agenda item. So uh, awesome. I'm, I'm happy to volunteer uh, uh, and, and, and help with, with on the SBOM side of things, but I understand that the scope is tooling and that's obviously the, the, the you know, the, the, the bigger picture, yeah, yeah. Totally, so I, before we leave and, and I need to I need to fix a meeting invite. It's supposed to end at five till. But before we go, is someone willing to take ownership of just kind of starting to collate some of this data in a place that's trackable and discoverable? Like Vicky just put a couple of links in the chat. And, and Daniel, you were gonna put a list together of contributions was it i don't i don't totally understand what i can uh, share i create a, a google spreadsheet uh, uh, and share it with you with the uh, an initial list uh, a draft initial list uh, categorized list not only as bomb um we can see once we consolidate that list or maybe we can uh, publish it somewhere I, I I was thinking about uh, sharing this uh, spreadsheet only with this group, but. And what are you putting on your spreadsheet? I don't, uh, that's not clear to me. Uh, the list of tools um, grouped by category. Just a list of uh, groups for, uh, sorry, a list of tools where we could um, propose people to contribute to. Okay. Uh, Vicky. So this would be like, a, a, I wouldn't say blessed, but a proposed a list of tools so people can um, decide where we, they can contribute to. It's not only for users, but for contributors. Okay. okay. Vicky? Um, so I uh, was looking for a place to put this sort of thing and naturally the tooling uh, working group repository was the first place I looked. And would you just look at this link right here? We have a start to some sort of document. Um, it doesn't list specific tools, but it does list uh, types of tools. And I think it's a good place to start to under each type of tool, perhaps we can link out to documents listing the tools or whatever. But um, We've got something already that we can start to work with and iterate on. Um, so perhaps for the next call, um, we can start to kind of flesh this out a bit. Yeah. I, I can think of one easy, I think, to add to it. The categories ah. of tools are two main ones, which are static and dynamic. And I'd say SBOM tools it would be there the third go. category right off the bat. <laughs> um, I would say pull requests welcome. Exactly. Okay. Should we open an issue in there? Mm -hmm. Let's please. do. Okay. Okay. I'll we take a look say at that later today or tomorrow as well. Okay. Thanks, Kathy. Uh, 
uh, Alta, this has a comment action item. Can we get someone from the CNCF tooling landscape to share thoughts on this? We will, does anyone know anyone on that group? Brian, do you think Chris would be willing to talk on it? Not sure. Um, uh, I mean, there's a lot of folks. <laughs> a lot of folks in the cloud native community active in um, uh, in this stuff. I, I I'd say probably more like the folks at ChainGuard or something. Um, maybe maybe Kim uh, or uh, um, Dan Lark or something. Okay. All right. We'll we'll try to find someone. I make no guarantees. Uh, all right. I'm going to set us free. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.